guys, welcome back to Passive Money. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the ideal stock portfolio for a investor, a new investor. So, Kirby, do you wanna do you wanna open this one up? I know this is on your list. <laughs> oh yeah, this is on my list. All right, so it's not. I mean, what like usually in this channel, we never really talk about the stocks that we hold. We give ideas. First off, we're not financial advisors. We're not recommending, but I'm going to give you an in-depth look on what what I hope and how I believe that for somebody starting out, how it should be, you know, breaking out. I mean, as you know, historically, I've always said diversification is not sitting there buying a whole bunch of stocks, hoping one goes up. That's gambling. Um, I believe in doing the work. Do, doing hard work, doing the due diligence over and over again. And then once you do due diligence, you put majority of your money in those aspects. So when it comes to uh, an investment portfolio, this is what what I recommend, what I do. Forget what I recommend, this is what I do. I mean, you can call me crazy or whatever. Um, but for me, I believe 50% of your money should go into the S&P 500. So no matter if that's the SPY, a mutual fund, I mean, SPY index fund, excuse me, or if you find a mutual fund that mimics the uh, SPY or SP500 index, that's where 50% of the money should go. And the reason why I say that is because if you look it up, 89% of money managers cannot beat the SP500, cannot beat it in a one year basis, three year basis, 10 year basis. So if they can't, if you can't, Find somebody that can beat it. So it's only what? 11% of money managers that can't beat it. If you can find those money managers, it's great for you. But if you can't, like most people can't, then why why try to why try to beat the market when you can just beat the market? Beat the market. So put 50% of your money there. And that's exactly where I have most of my stock and investment stuff outside of real estate and outside of businesses. I have it there. <laughs> Excuse me. And then the next 25% for me is, is in the NASDAQ. It's in science and technology. So the QQQs, if you're using the index fund, or you can find a mutual fund that mimics the NASDAQ 100. So 75% of your portfolio should be S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. And the NASDAQ is the most, you know, the biggest companies in science and technology, the NVIDIA's, the Tesla's, the Facebook's, the Apple's, the Google's, the yada, 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 the top 100 uh, science and technology companies in the world is in the NASDAQ. And you will have overlap from the S&P 500. So that's 75% of your portfolio right there. It's easy. And then so from there, if now I know everybody want to hear, well, so what's the individual stocks? What's the individual stock? Individual stocks is it, again, unless you're going to do the homework, then it's just gambling. I, I'm not going off of what somebody on YouTube said, what somebody, you know, hot stock of the week. I'm not doing all that. I mean, if you're if you're going to put in the work and then look at financial statements, if you're going to look at, you know, uh, income statements, cash flow statements and things like that and understand how the management working, listening to conference calls ad nauseum, uh, you know, reading earnings earn the statements, then in individual stocks is not for you. I'm just being honest. But if you're going to do the work, my recommendation is still the same 75% is where it's at. S&P 500, NASDAQ. That's the first 75%. And then from there, get one dividend uh, king or aristocrat. For me, my dividend king or aristocrat is Altria. I don't care how you feel about tobacco and smoking. That's just my dividend king and aristocrat. I'm just letting you know. They dividend king and aristocrat. A dividend king has been growing their dividend over 50 years. An aristocrat been growing their dividend over 25, 25 years. Altria is my dividend king and aristocrat. I don't care how you feel about it. That's just mine. You pick yours. That's fine. The next one is, and this is all with the bottom 25%. Since the first 75% is S&P 500, NASDAQ, and then so the, and then my next one is uh, a growth stock. I don't care what the growth, I don't care what the growth stock you figure in, but I want something that's going to last for a long time. My growth stock is Amazon. Amazon pre-split. I was buying Amazon since eight eleven. 
pre-split. So I don't know what that number is. I think it's like $40 or $32 after the split. But I've been buying Amazon's, you know, 811 since pre-split. And Amazon is the growth stock that I plan on playing for in the long term, just because of the, you know, the moat that they have being the biggest player out there. And then last but not least, of that 25%, I pick one that I'm just going to gamble all the way uh, to the end. And for me, that stock is SoFi. And uh, SoFi is, you know, playing in the is, uh, fintech, you know, uh, fintech banking and things like that. And those are the things that I'm, I'm playing all in all. But it don't matter if you pick those three stocks or in the actual picking at uh, one wild one that's, you know, big risk, risk, big reward. And that's what SoFi is. I'm taking a big risk for a big reward. Uh, that's just one that you that you can go out there. But you don't even need that. You can just stop at you can just stop at NASDAQ. S&P 500, if you want to add a dividend king, you can add that. And if you want to add one growth stock, then you can add that and just ride that out to nauseum. The last one, just having that big risk-reward stock, that's totally optional. But if you don't want to have stocks at all, just NASDAQ uh, S&P 500 and you'll be fine. But Alex, what you got? So for, I mean, so for the stocks I use... Um... I guess my, I mean, my strategy is a bit different um, and I invest differently from my Roth IRA than I do with uh, like just my regular brokerage account. Um, in my Roth IRA, I have, I mainly just invest in a NASDAQ mutual fund and a S&P 500 mutual fund. And that's sure. really all. Now, if there are pullbacks on really good stocks that I think have a lot of potential, then I'll buy into those knowing that I'm still 24 by the time I can withdraw from the Roth IRA, those companies will probably be 10 X what I'm purchasing them at or more. Um, I did this with Amazon and I did this with Facebook when those, those stocks dropped. Um, so, yeah. you know, I didn't invest like tens of thousands, but I invested um, a couple thousand into each uh, company and those stocks have since come up and Facebook is up. 80 something percent right now and um amazon is up like 30 percent or something like that um so that's what i do with my roth and then on my individual account honestly uh because i'm still in the beginning stages of investing in real estate my uh my strategy i i honestly need to be more consistent with it so this this time i'm trying to actually keep it in a consistent strategy where I have three uh, dividend companies and they pay me, you know, one will pay me one month, the next and the next month and so forth. So the three I have are Bank of America, AT&T and Altria Group. And so I have those as dividend stocks. And then um, I invest in the S&P 500 just for an alternative to saving for real estate. The three dividend stocks I have, I don't want to touch to use for real estate. If I have to, I will, but I want to see if I can get to a position where by the time I do purchase the next property, I don't have to sell off those stocks because I would like a stock portfolio um, as an additional form of income. And I do uh, have a uh, stock in CGC, which is a marijuana company. Um, and I invest in that stock um, because I do believe marijuana will be legalized. Don't know exactly when, um, but I do believe once it is legalized, that company will be one that will either grow or will be bought out by um, Constellation Brands, which is uh, one of their, their biggest shareholders. Um, and then apart from that, um, I don't have any other stocks. I uh, I will like sell puts. So if I have cash sitting on the sidelines waiting to buy when the S&P 500 drops, I'll sell puts on like SoFi uh, and stuff like that. But that's the gist of what I do in the market. Yeah, and again, this is not a recommendation. I mean, for me, it's just 
uh, saying what allocation should be where. And again, me and Alex do it two different ways. Uh, me, I believe, you know, because and the reason why I set up mine this way, and I believe most people should set up theirs this way, is because they're not going to do the work. They're not going to go in there and do the time, do the time. So if you're not going to do the time and research each company hand over hand, S&P 500, NASDAQ. And then if you want to go venture off in the stocks that you're not going to pay attention to, then you got 25% of your money out there gambling if you want to gamble. And then you still got 75% of your money sitting there and, you know, stocks that appreciate. And, and FYI, this is for the record and for all the people, the reason why I invest in the index funds is the stock market has a 100% history track record of recovery. 100%. Every time the stock market has came down, and now what happens in the future happens in the future, but I'm just talking about historically. I, I believe about studying history. There has never been a time in the stock market where it, ha it has come down, and then in the future, it has not eclipsed that price and went high. So that's why I'm big on investing in index funds and things like that. Because if you look at the Dow Jones, now individual stocks have came down and collapsed and went to nowhere. Some went bankrupt. But the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, they've always, they've come down. But every time, 100% of the time, it has always a clip where it came down from the last peak that it has. So that's why I'm a big proponent on investing into the, uh, indexes versus going there just trying to battle different stocks over and over and over again. Uh, you got anything else before we close out? No, we're good. <laughs> okay. Well, let me say, y'all have a good one, and we will see you in the next video. See you guys.